Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Agile Tester Sample Paper Discussions. Today we'll be getting started with our very first tutorial. We'll be getting started with the set A of our Agile Tester Examination Mock Paper. And uh, we are also getting started with the very first chapter today, which is the chapter 1. And uh, here we'll be talking about our Agile Software Development Model. And indeed, there are a lot of common fundamentals about Agile methodology in this chapter and we shall look forward to see what kind of questions we can expect from here and at the same time how do we resolve them right so let's get started the very first question coming up on your screen is right here it's a very fundamental question talking about uh, the Agile manifesto and the four pillars or I must say the four core values of Agile altogether so the question says the agile manifesto has four statements of values match the agile values on the left that is one to four with its traditional counterpart on the right that is in the roman one to four so we have of course the four standard uh you know core values or statements of value for the agile and that's what is being mentioned here so i think there are no justifications required for these type of questions the better you have the learning and standard definitions being aware of would help you to give you the right answer here right so in this we don't really have to dig into anything or there's no kind of like elaboration or justification some topics are very very straightforward which are written as it is and as it is if it is written then certainly we have to be remember you know be aware of that and remember those standard naming conventions and the you know standard terminologies now in this case of course uh, all i can do is give you the answer and indeed straightforward so here first of all you need to only kind of use a hack if you want to use as if you forgot some of the things you can just correlate with something which you are very very sure about so number one if you say customer collaboration now customer collaboration indeed if you just slightly you know look into that you would understand that hey why would i talk about customer collaboration and what should be the counterpart of it where the word comes in your mind as contract negotiation collaboration of customer is relationship and contract negotiation is more of like you know talking about the details of the project and negotiating on the timelines and budgets etc so collaboration and negotiations are Two different aspects of it right so even if you in case forget you can certainly do this but i would suggest if you remember the things that's more better than doing this exercise and you know spending your time here so the customer collaboration over contract negotiation is the first talking about responding to change of course change counterpart is a plan right plan is something which you define and you're sticking to it like following a plan but here they're saying responding to change. So that's a very straightforward thing. Again, if you just look at the opposite and counterpart keywords, that also will help you to pick up the right answer. So responding to change over following a plan is the uh, value statement. The third, individuals and interaction over what? That is, of course, processes and tools. Here we give more importance to people and their interaction compared to the process and tools what we follow. And last but not the least, of course, working software over comprehensive documentation. Writing lengthy documentation certainly doesn't help, but when it comes to a working piece of software is the primary measure of progress in Agile. To put together, the right answer here is B, that is one goes to three, two goes to two, three goes to one, and four goes to four, which are the four core values of Agile Manifesto. Moving on to the next question, this question certainly talks about another part of the Agile Manifesto itself, but in a different fashion. So which of the following statements best reflects one of the value of the Agile Manifesto? And we have four options. Number one, working software allows the customer to provide rapid feedback to the developers. Um, yes, to a certain extent, we do remember that when we talk about Agile, working software is the primary measure. In fact, one of the core values is talking about working software over comprehensive documentation and yes indeed it gives back in a rapid feedback uh, to the developer the reason why we are saying developer is a little tricky here so that you get confused and uh, kind of like start looking at something else but it's not to the developer it's for entire team so let's be sure about the right answer before we say anything because this question again 
has the word best which is going to be a little tricky to deal with right whenever you see the word best in your question that means two or more questions may sound correct but one of them will be completely right so you should choose that one which is the best compared to all other options so a looks good uh, let's check with b b says developers should use unit testing tools to support the testing process uh, which is indeed a part of agile methodology but not among one of the agile manifesto values right agile manifesto has never discussed about what tools or what process should you make use of and it does not really uh, make a difference how exactly uh, unit testing should be done uh, given that most of the things are done automatically most of the things are done by you know testers uh, when it comes to unit testing it is generally developers so developers should use unit testing tools to support the testing process i think the whole uh, agile is all about it should be driven by the tools because we don't have enough time so it is a very normal practice especially in the test driven development it's not one of the values in agile manifesto as well so b can be ruled out c business representative should provide a backlog of user stories and their estimates to the team yeah that becomes one of the principle of indeed but the value is generally from the customer collaboration and contract negotiation so the four standard core values is what we are talking about and in that this is again not one among them talking about the adopting plans to change adds no deal value to an agile project they started to be frank very appropriately adopting plans to change which adds no real value to the agile project so that indeed is not one of the thing indeed the uh, in turn the manifesto is trying to say that the value is responding to change over following a plan uh, which is contradicting with the option d so i think at this point of time the best option what we have with us and the right answer here is a working software allows the customer to provide rapid feedback to the developer because working software is a primary measure over uh, over of course when we talk about uh, the agile manifestos it is something which is important working software is a primary measure of the project over comprehensive documentation well Moving on to the next question, the question number three. Question number three is a really, really new type of questions for all of you. If you have been through foundation, you did know that uh, you only get four options for any question. Introducing for the first time, Agile certifications will ask you two to three questions out of 40, which will have more than four options and you will be asked to select both of them. And in this case, of course, you need to be right in both the cases. If you're partially correct, for example, you choose one option which is right and another option which is wrong, you did not get any partial marks for it. That means though there's no half marks, right? So you will either get full marks, that is one point, or you don't get anything, that is zero point. So you have to be completely correct. You don't get any marks for being partially correct. So this is going to be a little tricky, right? So the question says here, which two activities below best represents responsibilities that are consistent with agile developers developments whole team approach so the two activities which are consistent and of course in the agile team of course and goes with the responsibilities for the whole team so we need to be little little curious here because this could be very very tricky in the examination it may sound like everything is absolutely correct so let's get started the option a says Testers are responsible for developing unit tests, which they pass on to the developer for testing. Now, that sounds very, very weird as we read that. But it says, uh, of course, uh, we can create the test if we want, but we don't create it and give it to developers to run them, right? We do it in a different context when it comes to TDD, test-driven development, where uh, we may create a test, but we can assist sorry no we, we don't create the test unit test is unit testing is completely the ownership and stake of developers so testers can associate in terms of reviewing giving some inputs but at unit level as you don't have any kind of stake on the code level it is completely the ownership of developers so it this depends on certainly the skill set of the team but developers if we are talking about the role developers take the ownership on this task so it's not the tester who does that 
B. Business representatives are expected to select the tools the team will use during the project. The team certainly works together to select the tools what they need. See, the whole team approach is all about that. It's not that someone is forcing you, someone is recommending you or telling you that, hey, this is what you should use. Now, the team has the complete ownership on making decisions, deciding on what they will use and how they will use, right? They will keep on updating the rest of the stakeholders that what you are doing and why you are doing and how you are doing. But nobody orders you in terms of stating that how will this be done, right? So, so the whole team makes a decision on selection of the tool, so that option can also be ruled out. Talking about the next option, that is option C. Option C says testers are expected to work with customer representatives to create acceptance test. Yeah, that certainly makes sense because it's not something what uh, an individual person will be responsible for. But testers are very, very uh, going to be helpful to the customer representative to help them create the acceptance test because they have the uh, entire ownership on the coaching part of the quality and the testing perspective. So yes, they can help the business stakeholders or representatives to build the required acceptance test. Talking about D, the whole team, uh, not just testers, has responsibility for the quality of the product. Exactly true. One of the ownership on the whole team approach is that uh, not just testers are held responsible for defining the quality in the product. Here, the whole team takes the ownership on any kind of achievements, any kind of completions, any kind of activities, etc. So put together, of course, there are uh, such things which takes you know whole team to be involved here in order to define the overall testing quality or taking the ownership on the quality of the product. So in that context, this looks a little better than the other options. If we talk about the option E, developers are expected to test non-functional requirements. Oh, come on, the testing is always with the testing team or test engineers. Developers may help with the task depending on the skill set, but it is generally an individual testing responsibility to test the functional or non-functional attributes of the product. So in that context put together, the right answer here is, C, testers are expected to work with customer representatives to create acceptance test, which is, of course, uh, they collaborate with business representative to do that. And D, the whole team approach, not just testers, has the responsibility for quality of the product, overall quality of the product. So I hope you had a wonderful understanding of these three questions today. We'll be just keeping limited questions in each tutorial so that we can deep dive, discuss in detail before we just give you the right answers, right? So this entire session is all about that. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thank you for watching the video team and happy learning.